How nicotine causes addiction? Forty six million Americans currently smoke. Seventy percent say they'd like to quit. Every year, forty percent try to quit. Fifty percent fail within a week. Eighty percent fail within a month. Ninety seven percent fail within a year. Of the three percent that do quit for a year, thirty to fifty percent fail in succeeding years. Successful long term quitters require on average five tries. Why is it so hard to quit? Two words, nicotine addiction, which is defined simply as tobacco use with loss of control. The American Psychiatric Association estimates that 85% of cigarette smokers meet this definition. Nicotine addiction is stronger than cocaine and heroin addiction you are more likely to become addicted to nicotine if you start smoking and less likely to quit smoking once addicted to nicotine even compared to heroin and cocaine. Everyone is susceptible to nicotine addiction but major factors that increase susceptibility are genetics, there's a familial predisposition, a young age of smoking onset, female sex, psychiatric illness, other substance abuse, and nicotine delivery by inhaling tobacco smoke, like cigarette smoke. There are three major mechanisms of nicotine addiction. One, the addictive property of nicotine is related to the rate of delivery of nicotine to the brain. Inhalation of cigarette smoke rapidly and repeatedly delivers arterial spikes of nicotine to the brain, and this is hugely addictive. Two, Nicotine releases gratification chemicals in the brain, the most important of which is dopamine, which provides a sensation of pleasure. Also released are norepinephrine, arousal, glutamate, learning and memory enhancement, serotonin, mood enhancement, and beta endorphin, reduction of anxiety and tension. I once asked a patient, what does smoking do for you? He said, everything. I said, what do you mean everything? He says, in the morning, it stimulates me and gets me going. When I get to work, it relieves my stress and helps me concentrate. When I get home, it helps me unwind and gives me pleasure. And then at night, it helps me get to sleep. Understandable when you see the array of gratification chemicals that nicotine releases in the brain. Thirdly, long-term use of nicotine produces functional and structural changes in the brain. Nicotine receptors over time become desensitized and then they increase in number and density. In addition, neuronal memory circuits are established in the cerebral cortex which subserve memory where external cues call forth nicotine cravings. Here you see the brain of a smoker versus a non-smoker post-mortem. You can see that the smoker's brain on the right has many more nicotine receptors which are tagged in yellow. Here you see areas of cerebral cortex which are activated when a smoker simply handles a cigarette lighter or sees a cigarette lighter. Here is a PET scan showing regions of increased brain metabolic activity when heavy smokers see a movie of other people smoking. Let's put it all together with the next two slides. When a person inhales the smoke of a cigarette, nicotine crosses the alveolar capillary membrane to the pulmonary capillaries, completely bypassing the right side of the heart, then to the pulmonary veins, left atrium, left ventricle, carotid artery, and up to the brain, where millions of nicotine molecules enter the alpha-4, beta-2 nicotine receptors, shown here, which then release gratification chemicals, shown here the most important of which is dopamine which provides the sensation of pleasure. This scenario occurs within seven seconds of a single puff on a cigarette and it recurs from puff to puff. So if a person smokes 20 cigarettes a day and each cigarette has 10 puffs, this scenario occurs 200 times a day, 1400 times a week and over 70,000 times a year. And what's the person doing when they experience these islands of gratification and pleasure? 
finishing a meal, having a morning coffee, speaking on the phone, driving their car, taking a work break, having a drink with friends, dealing with stress. So over time, routine daily activities become cues that trigger cravings for a cigarette, and this makes it very hard to quit. This slide shows the cycle of nicotine addiction. Nicotine is initially used for pleasure, enhanced performance, and mood regulation. In other words, positive psychoactive effect. After months, perhaps a year of continued smoking, tolerance occurs, where nicotine receptors become desensitized and require more and more nicotine to produce the same gratification. So the person smokes more and more. At this stage, the nicotine receptors increase markedly in number and density, and the person has now developed a functional and structural disease of the brain, because at this stage, if they try to quit, nicotine withdrawal symptoms occur. Irritability, difficulty concentrating, restlessness, depressed mood, anxiety, insomnia. These start about three hours from the last cigarette, peak in three days and can last for months. The person then relapses and goes back to smoking for two reasons. One, to relieve the noxious withdrawal symptoms, and two, to seek the positive psychoactive effect, such as pleasure. And this cycle repeats itself over and over and over again. Not shown on the slide, but very important. Superimposed on this is behavioral conditioning, where external cigarette cues such as seeing someone smoke or smelling the smoke or having morning coffee call forth cravings for a cigarette. This is the external expression of neuronal memory circuits in the cerebral cortex which develop over time and which can last a lifetime, especially if the smoking started during adolescence, which is a very vulnerable period for nicotine addiction. The take-home message. Nicotine addiction is the outward manifestation of a functional and structural disease of the brain. It is not simply a behavioral problem of weak-willed people. Virtually every major health agency now classifies nicotine addiction as a chronic disease, such as diabetes and vascular disease, and it therefore must be treated with the same diligence and ongoing care. In diabetes, the pathology is in the pancreas. In vascular disease, it's in the blood vessel wall. In nicotine addiction, the pathology is in the brain. Nicotine addiction, which drives compulsive smoking, is the world's deadliest chronic medical disease.